Good morning. I missed you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's why you're sitting in the front. Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, it's nice to see all of you here today. Welcome to worship. Uh, welcome to those of you who are joining us online. Uh, we're so glad that you're here uh, to be here in God's house. Um, this is sometimes referred to as the, the pulpit. Uh, if you know that the pulpit is, uh, it's a nautical term, a naval term uh, for the front part of the ship. And, and it's the, the front part of the ship that cuts through the waters in the same way. When we're going through a, a, a storm in our life, it's God's word that leads and guides us and cuts through those storms in our life and leads and guides us uh, to our, our safety home in heaven. And that's what we're celebrating here today in God's house uh, through word and sacrament that God leads us and guides us when it feels like our, 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 we're in the middle caught in a storm. And he's there with us to lead us and guide us and protect us and bring us safely through this life and into our home at peace with him in heaven. We celebrate that here in his house today. We'll begin our, our worship with our opening hymn, Rise, Shine, You People. May God bless our worship here today. Brothers and sisters, we worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, as we approach our holy God in worship, we must confess the sin that surrounds us, fills us, and separates us from him. We ask him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin. For faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us lift our voices in praise to God. the 
one who breaks the darkness with a liberating light. Praise the one who frees the prisoners, turning blindness into sight. Praise the one who preached the gospel, healing every dread disease, calming storms and leading thousands with the Father's word of peace. Praise the one who blessed the children with a strong yet gentle word. Praise the one who drove out demons with a piercing two-edged sword. Praise the one who brings cool water to the desert's burning sand. From this well comes living water, quenching thirst in every land. Let us praise the word incarnate, Christ who suffered in our place. Jesus died and rose victorious that we may know God by grace. Let us sing for joy and gladness, seeing what our God has done. Let us praise the true Redeemer, praise the one who makes us The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord our God, govern the nations on earth and direct the affairs of this world so that your church may worship you in peace and joy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson this morning is taken from the book of Proverbs, chapter 30. When we're faced with assaults in this world, God is our shield. When we're attacked, we find comfort in his flawless word. Who has gone up to heaven and come down? Whose hands have gathered up the wind? Who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name, and what is the name of his son? Surely you know. Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. This is God's word. Our second lesson is a continuation of readings from Paul's second letter to the congregation in Corinth, chapter 5. This section of scripture is often referred to as the great exchange, God's great exchange, where he took all of the sin of mankind and placed it on his son, and he took all of the righteousness of his son and gave it to us, gave it to mankind. Paul writes this, For Christ's love compels us, Because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us this ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This too is God's word. Our Holy Gospel for this Sunday is taken from the Gospel of Mark chapter 4. This will serve as the basis for our sermon. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. Mark records for us 
That day when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd, the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is the gospel of Christ, our ascended king. We join in our confession of faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son, Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated and I invite the smaller children to come forward for the children's message. Cinderella, you lost your shoe here. There you go. There you go. How are we doing today? Good, good. One of the coolest things I think about living out here in Arizona is the season that's coming up. What's, what's going to start happening here with the weather? Well, it's summer, yeah. Heat. What else is going to happen? Fall. Okay, we're getting a little close. What else? When the rain starts coming, what do we call when those heavy rains and storms start coming? What? The monsoons. Do, do you guys ever you guys ever been in a big monsoon? What happens when the monsoons come? What's a monsoon? Describe for me a monsoon. What? It pours. Yeah. You ever have that in your backyard where the water starts coming up and creeping up towards the back door, right? It just starts flooding and flooding in your back. You just sheets of rain just getting dumped onto us. What else happens with the monsoons? What else would you describe? Yeah. Oh, there's a ton of lightning. It looks like just up in the sky where it just and you see it looks like fireworks going off and just flash, 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 flash. What else? What comes with the lightning? Dark storms. Dark storms. Yes. What else comes with the lightning? Thunder. The thunder starts ripping and roaring. And does it ever, you ever have it where thunder roars so loud it shakes your chest? Do you ever have that? Oh, oh, it's pretty cool when it does that. But it's sometimes when those storms come in, when it's really loud and in the, in the lightning comes and, and the thunder's roaring. Who gets scared? You, yeah. My dog gets scared too. Cassie gets scared. She goes and runs and she goes and hides underneath my bed when it roars too loud. She gets scared. Do you guys ever get scared in storms? 
Really? Nobody ever gets scared? <laughs> she does. Way to throw your sister under the bus. Yeah. Well, you guys are way braver than I am because I would get scared during storms sometimes when I was your age. I would get scared of the dark. Or do you get scared of anything else? Maybe not storms. Do you get scared of anything else? Scorpions? Spiders? And bears? Oh, my. Yeah. Actually, this what? morning, um, a spider actually went on in the bed. Oh my gosh, it scared me so bad. A spider went on your shoulder and it scared you? Yeah, that would scare me too. But when those scary things come up, what do we have? We have a promise from Jesus. What's his promise to us? Yeah. He'll keep us safe. And he'll guide this through. And I'm going to talk a little bit in the sermon about Jesus calming a storm. The disciples were in this, this boat with Jesus and all of a sudden this terrible storm came up. This furious squall. And they were scared. And what, what did they do? They ran to Jesus and Jesus helped them. So whenever you're scared, whenever you're worried, whenever you're afraid, who can we turn to? We can turn to Jesus and we can know and trust that he'll keep us safe because after all, he loved us so much that he was willing to save us from our sins. He loves us so much, he's going to lead us and guide us into heaven. So whenever you're scared, you can always turn to Jesus. Okay, let's pray and let's do that. Dear Jesus, thank you for allowing me to come to you and for you keeping me safe. Bless me every day as I walk with you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys were awesome. Thanks for coming up. You can go back down with moms, dads, aunts, and uncles, whoever brought you. And we'll continue with our hymn of the day, He Will Hold Me Fast. My faith will fail, Christ will hold me fast. When the tempter would prevail, he will hold me fast. I could never keep my hold through life's fearful path. For my love is often cold, he must hold me fast. He will hold me fast, he will hold me fast. For my Savior loves me so, he will hold me fast. are his delight Christ will hold me fast precious in his holy sight he will hold me fast he'll not let my soul be lost his promises shall last Bought by him at such a cost, he will hold me fast. He will hold me fast, he will hold me fast, for my Savior loves me so, he will hold me fast. life he bled and died Christ will hold me fast justice has been satisfied he will hold me fast raised with him to endless life he will hold me fast till our faith is turned to sight when he comes
comes at last. He will hold me fast. He will hold me fast. For my Savior loves me so. He will hold me fast. loves me so he will hold me fast God's grace his mercy and peace are yours in abundance through Jesus Christ our Lord our King amen the words for our meditation and consideration here today are taken from Mark's gospel that day when evening came he said to his disciples let us go over to the other side Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is the gospel of Christ, our King. Please bow your heads and join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear friends, this past week, uh, Alyssa's brother, uh, Jess, he came out from Minnesota with his two sons, uh, Kate and Camden. They're fourth, you said fourth and sixth grade, I think. Yeah, fourth and sixth grade. Uh, it was fun to show them. They did, the boys had never been to Arizona before, so we got to show them around some Arizona sunshine. Uh, got out of the Minnesota humidity a little bit, even though it's getting a little more humid here. But got to do some grilling, do some swimming, just get to visit, all that good stuff. One of the things we did was we went out to Swarrow Lake uh, for some paddle boarding and a picnic. And it was a beautiful day, obviously sunny, uh, nice gentle gentle breeze for the most part, but it did get a little windy. And uh, anyway, while we were taking him paddle boarding on, on the lake, I had Camden, he's the fourth grader. I had him on the paddle board with me and uh, we start to make our way out the lake and it's, it's fairly calm, fairly calm and we start making our way out. But then all of a sudden you see some of the jet skis and the speed boats ripping and roaring out in the distance. And then you could see the, the waves start, start coming. And every time he'd see him coming, and he'd just clutch onto the paddle board. Uncle Mark, can we go back? Uncle Mark, can we go back? And, and I'm like, Camden, it's okay. It's fine. You're just kind of doing this, you know, just a little rocky, you know. And then it would calm down. Okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And then all of a sudden, you'd see the waves coming again. And he'd clutch and just hold on. Uncle Mark, can we go back? Can we go back? Can we go back? It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It must happen four or five times. I'm like, bro, it's okay. We'll be fine. It, it, it's going to be all good. Nothing like what happened with Jesus and his disciples, right? This monstrous squall that rises up. So when we pick up in the gospel for today, Jesus has been with his disciples for several months. They're still relatively new at this whole discipling thing, right? Uh, Jesus has called them to follow him, and they're kind of learning the ropes. They, they've had some experience, a couple months with Jesus, where they've been able to travel with him and watch him and listen to him teach. They, they've had opportunities where Jesus would draw, withdraw from the crowds, and they could ask him questions. You know, imagine that, being able to sit at Jesus' feet and ask him and have him explain to you one-on-one -on -one some of his parables. They had those types of opportunities opportunities to do that. But again, this is still relatively a new life for them. Anyway, Mark tells us that after one day of preaching on the shores of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus says, we're going to stop for the day and let's, let's just pack up and hop in the boat and we'll go off to the other side and we'll, we'll take a break away from the crowds and we'll, we'll rest. 
Again, as a preacher, if you know any preachers, you know what we do on Sunday afternoons is we nap. I have a date with my couch this afternoon. That's exactly what I'm going to do after church is go rest because it's just, you're on and it's, it's nice to be able to do that. That's what Jesus says he's going to do. Now, when Jesus says this, okay, class dismissed enough for the day, I almost picture the disciples with a little bit of a twinkle in their eye, like, okay, Jesus, we got this. You just sit back and relax. Remember, you got Peter and Andrew, James and John. They ran a fishing business. This was them in their element. These are born, bred, water-fed fishermen, right? This is what they do. They grew up on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. They fished with their fathers ever since they were young boys. You can almost picture Peter and Andrew and James and John kind of shooing Jesus to the back of the boat. You know, Rabbi, we got this. You just sit back. It's going to be a nice calm little cruise across the Sea of Galilee. We'll make our way. You just rest. Don't worry. We got this from here, Jesus. We can take it. But then, what happened? In an instant, the weather turned. It says, suddenly a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Even still today, if you go to the Sea of Galilee, it's kind of, um, it's kind of settled like a, a cereal bowl. The, the lake has these mountain rims all around it. And you can kind of see the storms come in and then they swoop down and swirl everything up and it all gets kicked up. The last time I was in Israel in Galilee, I saw one of those. It was a beautiful, calm day. And then all of a sudden, the storm just comes in and swirls everything up. This furious squall just all of a sudden starts swamping the boat. The rain becomes relentless. The waves and the wind, they start pounding and bashing the boat. Uh, the, the ripping and roaring thunder starts swallowing up the disciples' screams for help. And the, the flashes of lightning just expose the fear in their faces. Now, if that was you or if that was me, who would be terrified? Okay, thank you. Ron and Ellen and me, the only three people that would be terrified. The rest of you are so brave. Yes. We'd be terrified if that was us. But think about how desperate, how hopeless, how helpless the disciples must have felt. Peter and Andrew, James and John. For sure those four had been seasoned sailors. And the circumstances were so dire and so desperate that they freaked out and panicked. You know, imagine being on an airplane and all of a sudden you hit some turbulence and the, the pilot from the cockpit goes, oh no. <laughs> like, wouldn't that kind of freak you out? I know that would freak me out a little bit. Things were so bad, so dire the circumstances that they thought, this is it. This is the end. There's no way out. We don't see any hope. Have you ever gone through a time like that in your life? You hit a storm. Maybe it was sometime in the past. You struggled looking for a job. Maybe your, your house was underwater. You didn't know how you were going to pay the medical bills. Didn't like what the doctor was saying. Maybe you're going through a time like that right now. Where all of a sudden, your world just got rocked. The relationship that you thought was going to stay together forever... Feels like you're drifting farther and farther apart. Maybe a friend that you, you loved, someone you cared about deeply, all of a sudden, they're not with you anymore. Maybe you heard some news from the doctor that it, it, it felt like, man, he was tying an anchor around your stomach and throwing you into the ocean. Or maybe it's just this, this mixed bag of anxieties and fears and worries and, and you feel like you're paddling and paddling and paddling but the current's got you stuck and you're going nowhere. You're bailing and bailing water but more and more just keeps fl flooding in. And, and, and you got all these fears and all these anxieties and all these worries and all this guilt and you're, you're crying out to God, where are you? Can't you see what's happening? Won't you please give me some guidance, some relief, some direction? And it feels like he's sleeping in the back of the boat. Where are you? It feels hopeless. I 
feel so helpless. I can't, I can't do it anymore. I can't go on. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Jesus, don't you care? Drenched, head to toe, <laughs> and freaked out of their minds, the disciples, they come running to Jesus to wake him up. I mean, after all, this was it. This was the end. And they shake him awake and they, they cry out in desperation, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Jesus, can't you see what's going on? What's, what's the matter with you? How can you sleep at a time like this? This is the end. Now, kudos to the disciples for going to Jesus because when they're hurting, when we're scared, that's exactly where we can go. But, but do you hear anything behind that question? Teacher, don't you care? Don't you care about us? You know, when, when we face storms in our lifetimes too, I think sometimes Christians can be guilty of, of accusing God of not caring. Sometimes we treat God almost like like carpet cleaner, carpet stain remover. Where's the carpet stain remover in your house? It's probably shoved to the back of that, you know, underneath the sink and you got the WD-40 and you got some of the Windex and you got the carpet cleaners back there somewhere, right? When does the carpet cleaner come out? Only when there's a mess. Sometimes we treat God that way too. That a mess comes in and all of a sudden we're like, okay, time to bring God out. Bring out Jesus. Bring out, okay, we're going back to church because life got messy. Now we're going to, now we're going to get serious about this. We sometimes treat God that way. God, don't you care? Can't you see what's going on? We ask that question and now why are we going through those storms? To be honest, if we're, if we're honest with ourselves, sometimes when we're facing storms in our life, it's because we put ourselves in that position. I mean, if you, if you get arrested for a DUI, it, well, it's not God's fault that you were drinking and driving. That's your fault. You put yourself in that position. Other times, though, when we're going through those storms in our life, maybe, just maybe, God is using those to draw us closer to him. Maybe God's allowing those storms to happen in our lives so we can open up our eyes to see just how much we need him and how much more importantly, how much he's there for us to get us through and weather those storms. What's so amazing is that the one who has gone up to heaven and come back down, the one who gathers up the wind in the hollow of his hand and wraps himself in the waters of the world as his cloak, the one who has established the ends of the earth most certainly cares about you and cares about me. As you heard in our first lesson from the book of Proverbs, he is a shield to those who take refuge in him. When we accuse God of being uncaring, he, he points us to the most caring act ever. He points us to the cross where we see that anchor of sin that would have dragged us into the abyss of hell removed. He points us to Jesus when we were drowning in our sin, pulling us free with his cross at Calvary. He begs us to remember the love that he has established for us, the love that was so great that he was willing to give up his son so that you and I wouldn't be lost, so that you and I would be his own. Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Well, of course he cared. And to show them... He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. Creation recognized the voice of the Creator. The rain rested. The sea settled. The stars came back out. And the disciples were so stunned into silence that the only thing they heard was the water dripping off of their beards. Who is this? They asked. Even the wind and the waves obey him. Who is this Jesus who's on our side? 
He's the one who left heaven's throne for you. He's the one who went to hell and back for you. He's God's son who rules over the universe. He's God's son who knows just how many hairs are on your head. He knows the worry and he knows the anxiety and he knows the guilt and he knows the fear. He knows you better than you know yourself. And he's the one who's leading you and guiding you as you make your way through the storms in your life. He knows you and he most definitely cares. As much as we might like for Jesus to settle all the storms in our life, just like he did for the disciples that day on the Sea of Galilee, he doesn't promise that he will. But that doesn't mean he leaves us empty-handed. He doesn't tell us he's going to settle all of our storms, but he does promise his infinite love, a love that he demonstrated at the cross. He promises that his power will be with us to lead us and guide us, a power that he demonstrated with an empty tomb. He promises that he'll never leave us, never forsake us. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Whether you're struggling with relationships or finances or health or heartache or anxiety or guilt, whatever it might be, Jesus will guide you through. And the same voice of your Savior who calmed the storm with those words, quiet, be still, says to your heart, quiet, be still. I'm with you and I always will be. May God bless us as we continue to walk with him, guided by our Lord and Savior, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. With that, all God's people say amen. Amen. May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we have opportunities to bring our offerings of thanks to the Lord. Ushers are going to be passing around a basket. You can also go to the church website and give online if you uh, are so inclined to do so. Um, we'd also ask uh, on page 9 in the worship folder, if you wouldn't mind just scanning the QR code that's on the worship folder, um, just to mark your visit here with us today, especially uh, guests and visitors. We'd like to follow up and thank you for joining us. We appreciate that you took time out of your day, out of your week to be here with us. We hope you'll join us again soon. Um, if you're joining us online, on Facebook, on YouTube, give the video a like, share this video with someone who could hear the peace of Jesus today. With that, then, we bring our offerings of thanks to God. We pray. O oh Lord our God, you are wise and powerful, good and gracious. Your mercies are new every morning. We praise you for every grace and blessing. Strengthen your church in all the world. Let your comforting message of salvation in Christ be proclaimed to those who are weathering storms, whose troubled souls are, are, are hurting. Use our ministries and our offerings to extend your healing and your hope and the certainty of your peace. We bring our request to you for the various structures of our society. Bless our national, our state, and our local governments. Grant us civil servants who are worthy of honor and respect. Grant prosperity to our businesses and industries. Give employers a sense of fairness toward their workers and employees a, a feeling of joy and pride in their workmanship. Help us to find satisfaction in all work well done. Invigorate the schools of our land. Give success to every effort that helps students read, think, and communicate in ways that will promote an informed and responsible citizenry. Give us teachers and students who pursue excellence, 
Strengthen the families of our country. Give fathers and mothers a renewed commitment to be good parents. Give children and young people the wisdom to regard their parents as your representatives. Bless also those who care for our communities through law enforcement and fire. Bless those who serve in that capacity and bring them home safely each and every day. Lead us to love, Lord, as, as you have loved us. And to you we bring our private petitions in silent prayer. All this we ask in the name of our Savior Christ Jesus, who calmed the wind and the waves and calms our hearts, and who also taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Supper is now ready. I invite the communicant members of peace to come forward for the Lord's Supper if, if you've prepared yourselves. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with our, our communion practices and you're visiting with us today and you'd like to join us, I'd ask that you please speak to me after the service. I would love to tell you more about what that entails. God bless your communion here today. Mm -hmm.
We give thanks, Heavenly Father, that you sent your only begotten Son into the flesh and that you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. Never forsake us, we pray, but rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that we may serve you constantly, for you live and reign with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll close our service with our final hymn, Amazing Grace. Welcome once again. Nice to see all of you here today. Uh, a couple things I'd like to point out on the green sheet uh, under the announcements. Uh, second from the bottom, the loan was approved uh, through the Wells Church Extension Fund. So that's good news. We're still waiting on the county uh, just to hear back when, when that actually gets the approval, but we already have some uh, process, pro progress being made on the property. Uh, you might see some fill dirt starting to get in there. The tre trees are getting chopped. The trees are chopped down, and those will be getting removed this next week. Is that, is that right, Jim? Jim? That's right. Yep, this next week. Uh, so some of those, those trees are going to be all hauled out, and it's gonna, you're going to start seeing some changes on the property. So that's exciting. Um, but uh, once, we, once we actually get the approval from the county, then we can know when we'll have a, a groundbreaking and all that stuff. So that's exciting. Um, and then the other thing uh, to point out, next week, uh, in lieu of Bible study, we're going to be having a congregational meeting. So you can hear about some of the, the progress and the updates, uh, approving the budget and things like that. Uh, some of the exciting things happening with peace. Um, we will do, we're continuing our Sunday morning study. If you, you're hopping in uh, into the summer, what we've been doing is taking the other two lessons that I didn't preach on in this, and, and, and just taking time uh, to, to walk through those and, and see how they tie into the Sunday. Uh, if you cannot stick around, there are extra printed sheets of that study that will be available in the back as you make your way out. I'd encourage you to take, take one and just, you know, Talk about it on the ride home. Uh, use it for your, uh, your family devotion, your personal devotion, whatever it might be. Am I missing anything? All right. Great to see all of you. I missed you. It's nice to be back. It's nice to be back together. And uh, we'll see you next week, if not before. Thank you. Mm -hmm.